Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be reviewing the Velocirax 6 bike carrier. So stick with us and we'll go through as many of the pros and cons as we possibly can. Quick disclaimer, this video was not sponsored in any way, shape or form. We bought this with our own money mostly because we're doing a big family bike trip this summer as well as we do a lot of work with the National Interscholastic Cycling Association or NICA. We do a lot of work with youth and bikes and it just comes in handy for us to be able to transport as many bikes as possible. So this bike rack is not for everybody, but for those of you that are considering it, we want to give you a thorough overview of the pros and cons of this particular bike rack. Andrew and I are going to show you how to get it in the car and install it. So we're going to lift it up. <laughs> Come on, Andrew! It's hole tight right there. There it is. It doesn't just get too much. There you go. So the first part is getting the pin in. It's just a nice lock pin. It's easy. Just stick it on the other side. Stick it through the hole. And get it in here. And push it and you're locked. That's part one. We want to show you what this bolt here does to really secure the rack in the hitch. You'll see that it just pulls this bolt and just offsets this and pulls it up tight so that with inside the hitch here it gets nice and snug. Great feature, love that particular part of the rack. Part two is cinching this up nice and good. So to cinch that up we just go righty tighty and I kind of just pick up on it a little bit to get it in that spot where it cinches easily and that's it. Doesn't shake around, it's in there nice and tight. We're going to start first by showing you how we would load up this particular bike rack. So the Velocirax rack has a nice little handle right here. You pull that down and it just comes out nice and slow. And you can see it doesn't come down super fast when there's no bikes on it. But when it's full of bikes, it comes down pretty quick. We're going to load this up for you so you can see what it looks like. Andrew's going to show us, this is a 24 inch mountain bike. So this is a, our youngest son's bike. Go ahead and show him how you load it up, Andrew. First he pulls it back. Gets it up here to the rack. This one's a little short, so he lifts it with his knee. Boom. Rolls it up there, turns it over. Good. All right. So he goes oh under there, around the tire that way. And, and he just goes it. down here. I can get it. There we go. Dad, can I do the bottom? And it's done. Okay. Tyler is going to do the bottom one. Ty, show us what you got. So he just lines it up there, goes around, he gets a nice stretch on it. So close. <laughs> get it, get it, get it! Did I get it? I think you got it. Yeah, Let's do there. a little inspection here. Oh yeah, so there you go. You can see there's a nice little nub here that kind of holds the tire from sliding out, but then it's held on nice and tight. Okay, Andrew, small. 27 and a half tire, right? Small frame. Yeah. On a Trek mountain bike. Still hard tails. Most, most of our bikes are hard tails. He just takes and lifts it up on the back and you're going to see him use his knee to lift up on the bike and he gets it lined up with the hoop there. And then once he gets it to a certain point, it just rolls over and then he tips it. And so here's where we come into some problems is sometimes these cables and hoses kind of get caught up on the next mountain bike handlebar over here. So you can see as Tyler gets in here, this is about how much space you have in between each bike. So not bad. I think the biggest problem that we've run into, okay, if you look here, this pedal is pretty close to the next bike, right? So the rubbing on the frames is what we're concerned about. So we've had to pay close attention to getting the pedals kind of in a spot where we feel like they're not going to rub on the next bike over. This is a medium to small frame with a 26 plus tire. These tires are 2.8 inches wide, so a little bit wider than standard tires. And Andrew's gonna show you what that looks like when he gets that one loaded. He's gonna go right up there and put the tire right on the front hoop. He's gonna lift up. Go ahead and give it a shot, Andrew. Gives it a push. Yeah, that was close. And then he tips it over as much as he can until he gets it in spot. Strap it in the back. So here you can see the bike is loaded with six mountain bikes. So here you see what the rack looks like on this end, right? Okay, Tyler, go ahead and shake the bikes from side to side. 
so they can kind of see how stiff they are. So you can see if you're really shaking hard, you can get the bikes to hit, so it's a little tight. This brake to the top of the headset, right? This brake and this headset, you can see, I can get my hand in there, but that's about it. I have to say, as we've loaded this on and off and done a few things and taken it on quite a few trips now, the rubbing is actually pretty minimal. It just is something to be aware of that it's, there is a small risk there. So just pay attention to where the pedals sit. Try to make sure that you've got your pedals in a place that you really like them so that you're minimizing that chance for rubbing. One of the hardest things that we have done with this bike rack is get it from the loading position into the locked position. Two, three. Is that all you got? One, two, three. Blurs, the easiest way to load them is to get a couple guys on the back and kind of push from the handlebar. The physics of it makes it much easier to push it over that uh, that pivot. So we're going to take a second and show you what it's like to let it down. I find it's easier on this side and you just kind of pull towards yourself and let it down and it eases them down nice and easy. So let's take a second to walk you through this hydraulic lift, right? It's got a nice piston here that allows that, that, that top tube to just ease down nice and easy. That can be released here so if you actually pull this up, you can make it so that it disengages this whole piston and then this thing is can f uh, go up and down freely, pivot back and forth freely. We wanted to show you this example. We have six bikes on here, okay? They're all different sizes. We've got the 24, we've got a 27, a couple 26 pluses, another 27 full suspension bike, and then we loaded a road bike next to it. And here's the issue, the road bike sitting with the mountain bike together does not sit well. The road bike sits in the carrier well, but not necessarily well next to another mountain bike. Maybe they're fine down here as we look at the pedals, but there's probably a better way to do that. You can put a mountain bike with a road bike, but it's really important to put <laughs> the road bike on the right side of the mountain bike to make sure that the bars and everything all fit together. But as I do that, you'll see it fits together quite nicely, still rides nicely. The road bike still rides pretty well. Two road bikes together. These are both very similar road bikes, but one has a set of aero bars on them. As we get here close, these aero bars are hitting here and the regular bars hit here, right? Like I can't get my fingers in there and they're just, too darn close when it comes to handlebars. The best solution we've been able to come up with is to put road bikes here in every other bay, which means that your six bike rack only now carries three. So definitely a con there if you're carrying lots of road bikes. Last but not least, we wanted to show you the fat bike. Now this is a 4.8 inch wide tire. So definitely not fat bike compatible. You're really sitting here just above three inches on the inside. Notice that the hoop, it's not a complete circle so that it's got room for the, the axles and whatever disc brakes and everything else that you've got there. Okay, here we're measuring from the top to the bottom lengthwise. And we're sitting just at 24 and a half inches, maybe just a little bit beyond that. I want to give you a good idea of how much clearance between the vehicle and the rack itself. So, so I use the level and it looks like we are just about a little over 10 and a half inches from the actual hitch itself. So if you've got a spare tire or something like that on the back of your vehicle, you have an idea of how much clearance you're going to have. How much clearance you have from the top of the bike down to the bottom of the hitch. Andrew, you got it held to the top. Highest point of the wheel there. And it looks like we're sitting right at about 73 inches. So that is gonna be the height coming off of the bottom of the hitch. All right, we're sitting at the top of the rack just to show you total length from side to side. We're sitting just about 61, 60 and a half inches. So the interesting thing is 
This first one comes in at about six inches. The second hoop comes in at 16 inches. The third rack comes in 26 inches. So you're sitting at roughly 10 inches apart on each of those hoops. But as I go to the next hoop, this is where the biggest gap is and you're at 38. So there, if I zoom back out here, you can see there's just a little bit more distance between bays three and four, right? Than there are between all the others. All the others have 10 inches. Okay, we're gonna show you how to take this off. We start by taking the lock off, the pin out, and I usually just set them right here. Okay, so this bolt right here is what keeps it nice and tight so the thing doesn't shake as I try to shake that. As I start to loosen it up, I just, and then it releases. We're going to slide this out and you're gonna kind of see how heavy this is. It weighs about 100 pounds. It's a little heavy for Andrew, even though he's only got half. So sometimes I can actually guide this mostly with Andrew's help. And then we can let it down. That's how we get it in and out. Now you can see that it's fairly heavy. Definitely not a one person job. All right, we're gonna show you how to put this into camping mode. All you have to do is really release the hydraulics. And to do that, we're gonna release that pin there. And we're gonna pull this pin out here. That'll allow us to pull this out of the way. With that released, and we can let this down all the way. With the rack in the camping mode, camping position, Lionel laying all the way down, we're ready to park bikes for the night. And so Tyler just brings the bike up. Go ahead and put it in there, Tyler. And it just sits on there like that. And now we can park all of our bikes for the night. We could even do it the other way around if we're having, if the bike handlebars are hitting. Ready? Set, go. And that's backed in in camping mode. So you can alternate bikes, one bike handlebars here, the other bike handlebars out. But you can park all of your bikes for the night in this particular position. You can even use it to lock your bikes to the rack. All right, Tyler's going to give us the pull-up test. Go ahead, Ty. Oh yeah, holds his weight nicely. One, two, three, go. I'm weak. <laughs> the frugal fit dad pull-up test. Ready? I think it works. Set, go. <laughs> I did want to show that I'm having a little bit of chipping on the powder coat. Not everywhere, but just on a couple, I think just right now one of these. You'll see that most of the rest of these knobs are okay. So a little disappointed about that, but I guess we'll deal with it. Another question a lot of people have is whether or not you can lock this rack up. Now this rack did not come with any locks, but I just wanted to show an example of what we've done is we've used this little hole at the end and we've locked the cable here, run it through the bikes, through the frames. We can even daisy chain multiple cables together or we could lock them through here in the middle if we wanted to. You could actually use this handle in the middle to anchor your locks right there. And then we just run that through all the way to the other side. This particular setup uses three locks and two long cables. But I'm sure there's lots of other ways you could figure it out, but it is possible to lock your bikes to a Velocirax. The question is, can you open up the back of the Suburban while you have the rack on? So that works quite nicely. Can you open up the entire back of the Suburban with it in the loading position? All right, we wanted to take a second to show you what this rack looks like on a small SUV. This is a 2007 RAV4, it's gonna be a little interesting. So if you can't tell, the RAV sitting much lower, it probably would work. But here's where it gets interesting. To simulate what bikes would look like or feel like on the back of here, I'm just gonna hang on. So definitely lower. There you go. I think it would work. I don't think it's ideal, 
uh, but you can see the ground clearance is actually pretty good. I've got probably about 18 inches there or so. In fact, you can see here, we're sitting at about 17 inches off the ground. Like 10 less. Less than 10 inches off the ground, off the back of the hitch. Even the Velocirax could work on a smaller SUV. I also want to mention that this Velocirax comes with this wall mount, which I have not mounted yet, but I put it up here to mock it up so you can see what it would be like. The idea is that you sit it on the ground, hook the hoops into here, and then you rack your bikes right here in the garage, and then it would sit on your wall. But I think that's a really nice feature that comes standard with the Velocirax to make your bike rack have a dual purpose, both store bikes in the garage as well as transport them when you're on the road. There you have it everybody. That's our review of the Velocirax bike rack. Uh, this is the six rack carrier. All in all, we're really happy with the Velocirax. It's a little on the heavy side. Uh, it's probably made more for trucks and SUVs. Probably not so much for vans and smaller SUVs, but I think it would still work. We really quite like it. It's been really nice for our family. Uh, we have a family of six, so when we were out in the Suburban, it carries all of our bikes quite nicely. It's the way we get out to our adventure. It handles mountain bikes extremely well. Road bikes are just mediocre. Durability is in question. No fat bikes. A little difficult to get road bikes and mountain bikes at the same time, but not impossible. Things that I love, I love how it lets the bikes down slowly. I love that I can get in and out of the back of the Suburban, no problem. I love that it comes with a lock. I love that I can lock the bikes to the rack. I like that most of my kids are now capable of loading and unloading their bikes pretty easily off and on this rack. This rack comes in around $900, $950, depending on tax and, and shipping that you might have. But unless you have a truck, I don't know how else you're supposed to carry six bikes. Yes, this is on the expensive side, but if you're looking to invest in something that's going to last a long time, I think this is the way to go. I've looked into a lot of bike racks, and so far, this is this one I'm pretty happy with. So there you have it. That is a full review of the Velocirax 6 Bike Carrier. If you like this video, please thumbs up and subscribe. We'll see you next time.